There's nothing wrong with a bit of challenge every now and again. In fact, breaking high scores and overcoming seemingly insurmountable odds is all part of the video game experience. But if said challenge sees you banging your head against a wall again and again until you bubble over into a rage that can only be quelled by launching your controller through the TV or snapping the game disc in half, perhaps things may have gone a little too far? Making games challenging is a lasting remnant of gaming's humble beginnings in the days of the arcade, where dying meant plugging in more coins and if a game wasn't constantly killing you, it wasn't going to be profitable. Thankfully, games no longer charge their players for continues. Please don't bring that back, EA. We're watching you. But the fun of getting good and beating a game at its own, well, game has remained. That being said, the following titles take things a little too far, becoming daunting trials that only the most dedicated, dexterous and downright determined can beat. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are 10 of the most challenging video games of all time. Number 10. The Witness. Starting things off, we have a game that challenges its players mentally rather than physically. You won't need quick reactions or an itchy trigger finger to play The Witness, but you will need paper, pens, the ability to think outside the box, and a borderline eidetic memory if you have any hopes of reaching the ending of this devious puzzle box. The Witness, created by Braid developer Jonathan Blow, sees players emerge from an underground bunker onto a mysterious island and tasks them with taking in everything they see around them, from the layout of certain objects to the shadows of branches, to solve puzzles and eventually reach the top of the mountain. Each puzzle will either teach players something new or unlock the next area for them to explore. There are over 650 puzzles in total, which Jonathan Blow estimated would take truly dedicated players more than 80 hours to solve. While the first few puzzles may prove insultingly easy, the challenge quickly ramps up. Players are given no direction, hints, or guidance throughout the entire experience, and instead they must use their ingenuity as they look for clues in the environment alongside answers to previous puzzles to decipher new solutions. Playing The Witness often feels like trying to solve a crossword on a 4D chessboard blindfolded. Number 9. Contra. Starting life as a coin-guzzling arcade game, it should come as no surprise that 1988's Contra for the NES is a challenging title. On the complete opposite end of the spectrum to The Witness, players will need dexterity, timing, and wrists of steel to complete it. They will still need an eidetic memory, however, to memorize enemy placements and avoid cheap deaths. In Contra, or Probotector, if you want to get all PAL regions about this, players take on the role of either Bill Riser or Lance Bean, two elite commandos with the most 80s names ever as they battle against the sinister Red Falcon organization and save the world. In practice, this consists of running from left to right, shooting, burning, and blowing up anything and everything that moves. What makes Contra so challenging is the fact that players are only given three lives, and their so-called elite commando is extremely brittle. Extra lives can be earned by killing enough enemies, but lose all three and that's that. Back to the start with you. Thankfully, a sneaky inputting of the Konami code will grant players a whopping 30 lives, making beating the game not even easy, but easier. If it wasn't for that code, maybe only five people on the entire planet would have reached the credits. Number 8. Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels When most people think of the Mario franchise, they think of light-hearted family fun and of brightly lit adventures that any gamer of any age can enjoy. Yes, there might be a few optional challenges designed to test the skills of the most dedicated fans, but these make up a small fraction of the overall experience. That is definitely true of modern Mario, but back in 1986, Nintendo had other ideas. After the success of the first Super Mario Bros, a sequel was sped into production. However, once they got their hands on it, Nintendo of America deemed this new game too difficult for American audiences and commissioned a different Super Mario Bros 2, which was based on and lifted assets wholesale from Yume Kojo Doki Doki Panic to be released internationally instead. The original game wouldn't see a wider release until almost a decade later, then titled Super Mario Bros The Lost Levels. Why was The Lost Levels so difficult? Well, it took the fun platforming of its prequel and ramped it up to 11, with painfully precise jumps that require perfect timing, random gusts of wind that can completely alter a jump's trajectory, unfair enemy placement, and a seeming desire to infuriate players at all turns. And that's not even mentioning the cruel trick that is the poison mushroom. Get out of here with that. Number 7. Celeste. No one said climbing a mountain was going to be easy, especially if that mountain is covered in ice and spikes. In Celeste, players step into the hiking boots of Madeline as she struggles against the weather, natural hazards, and her own self-esteem and anxieties to reach the summit of Celeste Mountain. This is easier said than done, as even though Madeline can cling on to sheer rock faces, leap off walls, and even dash mid-air, a single misstep spells doom. Checkpoints are incredibly forgiving, but seeing as almost every surface is covered in insta-kill spikes and bottomless chasms, 
spasms abound, it's incredibly easy to slip up and die repeatedly. Quick fingers and perfect timing are a must, and even then, there's no guarantee. Of course, those who just want to experience the game and story without the risk of controller smashing can always turn on assist mode to alleviate some of the challenge. However, for those who are a glutton for punishment, Celeste's includes optional strawberries to collect, which can require some seriously skillful platforming to find, as well as B and C sides, which remix levels into nigh on impossible versions of themselves. Yeah, good luck with that mountain. I'm gonna be down here on the ground where it's safe. Number 6. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice The Soulsborne series is hard. I think that's something we can all agree upon. Each game delights in battering its players into the ground over and over again, however they also allow their players to get stronger by levelling up or upgrading equipment or work together by summoning in help. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, however, offers no such solace. In this game, set in a fictionalised Sengoku-era Japan, players take control of Sekiro, a shinobi tasked with protecting his young lord. As they travel Ashina on their quest, players will find everything that makes the Soulsborne series so difficult. Enemies that can kill them in a single hit, deviously placed traps and bosses that can squash them like an ant. And while players can upgrade their skills and prosthetic abilities as well as slightly increase their attack power, they cannot grind for levels and items as they could in previous titles. Instead, players have to, ahem, get good by learning enemy attack patterns and perfectly timing their deflects to break their posture and open them up for a killing blow. While enough practice can make things easier, one slip-up can be costly, as every last enemy hits like a freight train. And just when you think you've got a handle on things, you have to face the final boss. Number 5. Cuphead When you first lay eyes upon Cuphead, with its lovely hand-painted backgrounds, colourful characters and delightful rubber hose 1920s style animation, you would be forgiven for thinking you'd be in for some family-friendly platforming fun. But you could not be further from the truth. Cuphead, despite its charming visuals, is a tough-as-nails gauntlet of a game and a real test to even the most ardent challenge seeker. Taking control of the titular Cuphead or his brother Mugman, players must face off against a series of increasingly difficult boss battles as part of a deal with the devil to avoid having their souls snatched away to hell. While each boss has their own unique mechanics and attacks, such as an actress using props and costumes as weapons or a shape-shifting djinn, they all share certain characteristics, such as filling the screen with enemies or projectiles which players must dodge like they're in a bullet hell shooter. Precision is the name of the game in Cuphead. Precision and an eagle eye. The screen is constantly filled with so many missiles and moving parts that players need to develop a sixth sense to identify what can kill them and what can't, all the while dodging the boss's physical attacks and firing back themselves. Hell can't be that bad, can it? Not after this. Number 4. Battletoads. Turbo Tunnel. That's all I need to say for this one. Battletoads is another NES callback to the days of difficult-for-difficult-sake arcade games. Playing as the Battletoads Rash and Zitz, players are tasked with climbing, racing and squishing every bad guy they see in this side-scrolling beat-em-up on their quest to rescue their captured friends Pimple and Princess Angelica. Not that most people will ever get past level 3. Blasting along the ground at blistering speeds on their speeder bikes, players are only capable of moving up or down to avoid upcoming hazards and hit ramps to jump deadly gorges, all of which arrive with only a split second warning to get into the right position. Hit a hazard or miss a jump and lose a life. Lose all five and it's back to the start. Players need ninja-level reflexes and superhuman memory to learn this course, and even then they'll only finish by the skin of their teeth. And if that wasn't hard enough, the final section of the level dispenses with the flashing warnings almost entirely. Most players will never progress any further, but for those that do, Turbo Tunnel was just the beginning. Number 3. Super Meat Boy While the cartoon style may look cutesy, the fact that this game has you playing as a sentient block of meat who leaves blood splatters wherever he goes on his quest to rescue his girlfriend Bandage Girl from the nefarious Dr. Fetus may clue you into the fact that not all is as it might first appear. Super Meat Boy is an incredibly challenging game, tasking players with launching themselves over spike traps, buzzing saws, lava pits and much, much more in nerve-shredding, patience-wearing tests of skill in order to reach Bandage Girl just to have her snatched away again at the last second. Then they've got to do it all over again in the next stage, only harder. The game has over 300 levels to complete, and for the true completionists slash masochists out there, beating a level with an a rank unlocks an even more controller-snappingly frustrating Dark World version to truly test your skills. Just try beating those without grinding your fingers to mincemeat. Go on. I mean, what would you expect from a game that new players were going to die so many times that it plays a recording of every last spectacular death at once should players ever reach the end of a level? Awful. 
Number 2. Ninja Gaiden NES Every game in the Ninja Gaiden series is difficult, a fact that they wear as a badge of pride and honour. But while one is more than happy to show players who's boss, it's the very first game that gets a spot on this list, specifically the NES version. The game stars deadly ninja Ryu Hayabusa on a quest to avenge the death of his father and ultimately save the world, a typical Tuesday for most ninjas, we'd imagine. Taking control of the Master Swordsman, players must make their way through six acts of gruelling punishment, the difficulty of which will make them question how much of a master Ryu truly is. Unfair enemy placement, precision platforming, and unforgiving level timers make reaching the end of this game a Herculean feat. But to make matters worse, the NES edition contained a rather unfortunate glitch. You see, in this version of the game, all checkpoints in Act 6 were broken. That means if players die at any point in any of the five devious stages or three demonic bosses, they are sent right back to the start of the act. Getting this far requires skill, but beating Act 6 like this is something reserved only for those who have mastered the ways of the shinobi in real life. Number 1. Ghosts and Goblins First released in 1985, Ghosts and Goblins is the oldest game on this list, and boy oh boy is it tricky. It is often cited as one of, if not the hardest games of all time, and with good reason. Taking the whole inflated difficulty means inflated profits mentality of old arcade games to the next level, Sir Arthur can only take two hits before losing a life and being forced to restart the level. Now I don't know who sold Sir Arthur his armour, but I do know the poor knight needs his money back, as a single hit sees it completely destroyed. Sir Arthur must then try to finish the level with nothing but his underpants to protect him and his modesty. Enemies do not pull their punches and will gladly fill the screen, launching projectiles and themselves at the player in an effort to do them in. This, paired with the tight level timers, means players have to keep moving and take risks in order to come out on top. And if that didn't sound difficult enough, defeating the big bad demon lord Astaroth isn't the end. No, players are then told they must play through the entire game again on a much higher difficulty, at which point they will be met with this ending screen. Congratulations, indeed. 